friends, 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 we have to talk. This time around we have to talk about what is wrong with Qualcomm, Snapdragon, MediaTek and basically the whole ARM CPU products and producers and also the basically the whole industry that fuels the smartphones uh, of today, the chips of today. So what we have to talk about is like a recent example that I collected that shows what's wrong with this whole industry and with uh, why this whole industry is like a doom to fail in certain areas when it comes to security for example. So what I want to talk about right now is even in this windy uh, like autumn winter like weather of um, Auckland here is about a recent story that came up uh, regarding Qualcomm Snapdragon processors like billions or millions of smartphones are using those processors especially in the West in Asian countries they are also using MediaTek processors and there's some processors in smartwatches and so on that are using some other chips but uh, mainly the processors used are the Qualcomm processors and uh, those processors have a security hole in not one Actually, a company, Checkpoint, figured out they have like 400 holes, security holes that allow you to access the system from a hardware level point of view. But just executing yeah, harmless looking commands that will overflow the display, no, the, 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 the DSP, the digital signal processor, which is the one processor that is used uh, is the hardware chip inside of the processor so it's one little tiny little unit on the processor that is handling the signals for uh, noise reduction on images on this video for example there's a dsp that's using this that's doing this it's doing together with encoders and decoders the encoding and decoding of images and uh, multimedia is the section where you can put it in and it's not only this, it's also used in uh, quick charging and I think in one of the last episodes of my, my, my spoken my podcast, Tech View podcast and German podcast, I was talking about how hackers hacked the possibility to overload your smartphones, to destroy your smartphones basically by hacking into the uh, quick charging or uh, fast charging uh, stations either on the power adapter or the smartphone itself to overload it to just pretend that it can take more power than it actually can so then the battery runs hot and the smartphone can even start uh, to exp the battery can start to explode or catching fire or something like this note 7 we all know this disaster from a few years ago still so the it's 400 different security holes in the uh, qualcomm processors and millions of people are using them and this came out right now and interesting thing is like the 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 arrows the the security holes were found like ages ago already how is it possible that it comes out right now it's simply because the checkpoint company that found out this issues by fuzzing simply so fuzzing with you throw random code into uh, functions and see what will happen and if the functions are not handling so they, if they don't have a good error handling uh, then they will just simply allow you to go into the system grab your data your personal data your images your uh, passwords everything with your passwords you can get to your bank and so on so the security holes are very very dangerous for people who are using smartphones and we're using smartphones nowadays almost everywhere and yeah this is uh, i think a very interesting uh, topic to talk about what is wrong with this industry because it is so clear that those patches were like six months one year ago maybe already done by Qualcomm so Qualcomm the manufacturer of Snapdragon processors got the error report by uh, checkpoint and they fixed them directly but the problem is the device is already out and if the device is already out it's nearly impossible to fix the device because even if Qualcomm updates their drivers or whatever the manufacturers for smartphones they don't update 
There's some manufacturers that just buy those processes, create their smartphones, release their smartphones and never update, never release an update. Still, to this day, you can get smartphones that don't get any updates. Of course, if you buy higher class, more expensive smartphones, usually you get updates, but not for the rest of the world, for the rest of the uh, uh, f lifetime of the smartphone itself. You get updates maybe two years, three years, who knows? And that's all. And uh, if you have a four years old smartphone, then you're out of luck. You don't get any security updates most of the time. If it's not an iPhone, then of course, or a Safe S phone, which also gets long, long uh, updates. So the issue here is the industry issue. You can see it very clearly. The, the manufacturers of those cheap smartphones, they don't want to update. They don't want to invest into it. And then of course, Qualcomm itself and MediaTek and all the other ones are also guilty because they are producing their software in a way that it's unfree, that it's, it's like proprietary. The drivers are compiled against the specific kernel version, which is like Linux kernel version, which is like the heart of the Android system. And this heart is like produced like months before the processor actually is released. And this driver is produced against this old, old, old Linux kernel. And this has, of course, issues. The other issues, of course, it's a proprietary driver. So if there's a new Linux kernel out, you have to recompile this proprietary driver against the new kernel. But Qualcomm is not doing it. MediaTek is not doing it most of the time. And of course the manufacturers, they just get the binary file. They don't get the source code of the driver most of the time. So they don't have the possibility to compile a new kernel. So the issue is that those manufacturers are not investing into something which I would say is a more logical way of doing things. It's like releasing the source code. So if Qualcomm would release the source code, the drivers for the processes, for the sound chip, for the network chip in the open or would collaborate with the Linux kernel team, then they just do it once, do it, put it on a level that is usable and then you can just up upload it to the Linux kernel community and the Linux kernel community would take care of it. You don't have to have dozens of people taking care of it. Just a few Linux developers will do it. A new kernel comes out and your drivers are actually there directly because the kernel will only be released when the driver is working the new kernel. And then you can get a new driver. I have my, my uh, Sony Xperia 1 here, for example. Xperia 10, doesn't matter. It comes with an pretty old kernel. We are at kernel version 5.8 right now. And this device here comes with Linux kernel, don't let me lie, 4.14.170. Of granted, the, the Linux kernel community now is doing like, oh, we have to backboard all this stuff because Android is not never updating the Linux kernel. So we have to backboard all the stuff. So they're doing new versions. But this is even 170. There's also like Stone Age. They are like it's version 114 700 or 400 something so the main problem here is the industry not opening up the drivers not investing into a long-term solution just seeing the short-term money that they want to earn and of course the manufacturers are doing the same thing the big manufacturers they have the money they have the cash they have the strength to do it to just change the industry in a way that is more convenient than later on for them as well because they get the drivers automatically from the Linux community. They don't have to mangle with it. They don't, maybe one few things they have to do and they have more control over this whole system. Look at Apple. Apple is doing their own silicon. They are all doing their own drivers. They can optimize the system. This is why Apple computers usually, Apple computers, Apple uh, smartphones and, and tablets usually have like very low capacity batteries usually in comparison to Android but get longer run times per uh, milliampere hours because they have the optimization they have the drivers they can tweak it on Linux the manufacturers mostly don't have the driver or if they have the driver they don't want to invest it into it which is like totally crazy I don't get it there's few exceptions Sony for example is very good at optimizing stuff but they don't they also don't have the driver they're optimizing in different ways there so manufacturers have to change. The whole industry has to change. If we have a closed system like this, it will never work out. We have to have a standard that which is open where everyone can participate to make better smartphones. Uh, that's it for this little talk. 
hopefully only 10 minutes long, not as long as my last one.